Hello, muscle children. My name is Justin Gosselin. I'm a strength and conditioning specialist and founder of GymSpot, the world's best gym locator. In this video, I want to briefly talk about how females are different than males when it comes to sport, diet, and sports science research. First and foremost, the reason that I phrased it, how females are different than males, is that males, more or less, are a physiological constant. We do not have menstrual cycles or any of the other confounding variables in our physiology that make high quality research so difficult. So it's not that men are some standard that women are supposed to live up to, but the fact is, in a research context, it is much more simple to get reliable data if you're studying males. So let's talk about it. Why is there so much less research done in females? For starters, for most of history, it was men competing in sports. So from a research dollar investment perspective, it just didn't make much sense. And whether you're happy about it or not, market forces do have some say in what research gets funded because people are putting their money down. Second, the female menstrual cycle is a mother of a complex topic. The cycle is typically divided evenly into two phases, the follicular phase and the luteal phase, and each can have their own effects. And for some women, these phases can be further broken down into early, mid, and late phases each with their own distinct characteristics. That means researchers have to control for the phase of a female cycle, and it isn't always easy to determine what that is. It also pushes data collection time back considerably. So ask your working on their PhD friend what that must be like. No two females have the same cycle, and even the same female can have variances in her own cycle from month to month. The point is, high quality science is supposed to be as rigorous as possible, and one small oversight can render your findings useless. And so while most sport research is still done in males, almost 80% of diet research is done in females. Now, obviously there's a whole conversation there surrounding social pressure and female beauty standards, but I think we can all agree on average, it is females who are trying to get smaller. You know, males getting bigger is a relatively straightforward equation with its own conversation surrounding the performance enhancing drug physique standards set for men by Hollywood action movies. In terms of superficial differences, females are typically smaller on average with less lean body mass and more body fat, while males typically have more visceral fat or the fat surrounding your organs. So although females tend to have higher body fat percentages, that body fat is much less likely to cause things like fatty liver disease, cardiovascular disease, and diabetes. And interestingly enough, females tend to use more of that body fat for energy than males do across all levels of exercise. So they hit the wall a lot slower than men do. The point being, not every conversation surrounding females and body fat percentage has to be negative. Females typically have wider hips, which is going to alter things like knee and ankle mechanics, and they typically have more mobile tendons and joints. These kinds of anatomical differences should absolutely impact some of the training directives we give to females. And it should probably also change how a female kind of manages her own expectations in terms of peak performance. So while females typically start out with lower levels of fitness than males do cause puberty, females will typically respond very similarly in terms of the relative improvements in performance associated with good training. Under a microscope, a female's organs, muscle tissue, bone, all look pretty similar to males. They're just smaller and less dense. And last but not least, hormones, everybody's favorite. Females have roughly three to 10% ish the amount of testosterone that males do, while males have similarly low levels of estrogen and progesterone. Now, obviously, this is not an exhaustive list of the differences between males and females in the sport fizz world, but good luck finding one. Thankfully, the rhetoric that females are just tiny males is dying in the fitness industry, but there's still a ton of work to be done in terms of understanding the whole picture. Frankly, most of the major differences in sports performance between the sexes can be explained by body size and body composition. 
Surprisingly, hormones and muscle fiber types, things like that, they're responsible for most of the remaining smaller differences. And uh, no one seems to talk about it, but females seem to be better suited for basically everything in terms of health and sports performance, except for explosive activities. Two perfect examples where women routinely outperform men are cold water swimming and ultra endurance running. Both are absolutely brutal in terms of physical and mental performance, but they don't get as much shine because they aren't as flashy and no one's dunking from the free throw line. So that about does it for a very general introduction to the differences between males and females in sports science. This video is going to be the first in a hopefully very long curriculum-esque video series on female sport physiology. All the clickable links in the description. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe for new videos coming every week. Thanks. If you need to find a place to train, go to gymspot.fit. Tell us where you are, what you're looking for, and we'll take care of the rest. Gymspot, the world's best gym locator.